Hey everybody, Robert with RC Archery. Today I've got a sneak peek into my shot that I'm going to be able to show you on video here. I'm going to go over exactly how I do it, all my shot execution, the way that I'm aiming on target, um, muscles I use, all that stuff. I'm going to give you 100% access and do exactly what I do. Alright guys, so the type of shot that I have is not going to be one that if you're struggling from target panic or if you have a tendency to have target panic that you're going to want to do. Um, it's what I'm going to be using more of is, is a control type shot. Uh, I'm not going to be fully pulling through a shot where all I'm doing is just focusing on, you know, floating on the target. There's a little bit more involved with that that I'm going to use when I actually uh, go to access, you know, how I use my release. So, with that being said, how do I do it, right? Well, I've tried tons of different methods over time. And actually this last year, I've spent a lot of time on really focusing on just different ones um, different ways to set up the bow, different ways to shoot my shot, um, and really varying off of what I've done in the past. And the reason I wanted to do that is because I want to test everything out and just see pluses and minuses of each technique and really find out what works best for me. Um, what I ended up finding is that I basically went back to something that originally what I did, uh, exactly back to that. It works best for me, and I'm going to explain why it works best for me. Um, because really when you look at shooting, there's, there's two different times you're going to be shooting. One is just practicing, you know, at home, at your archery range, wherever it is. And it's low stress, you know, everything is just flowing and everything is going. It's really easy when it's like that to be able to do any kind of shot method that you want. You know, whether that's holding there and relaxing, letting the hand stretch out. Um, you know, whether it's relaxing on the index finger, whatever that may be, it's really easy to do that type of shot. But when you get into a situation where there's a little bit more tension placed on you, whether it's at a tournament or you know, shooting at an animal or a bet between you and a friend, or you're just putting that pressure on yourself because you want to try to get you know, a certain score, just something like that, you'll find that your body tenses up, your mind doesn't work as fluidly, and it's a little bit harder to do some methods consistently. A lot of people say that they hang up a lot and they can't get their hinge to fire because they're used to letting their hand relax and stretch out or they're used to relaxing the index finger. I was kind of the same way. Um, the method that I used a lot for a long time was letting my hand stretch and allowing that motion to rotate my hinge or to rotate the thumb button to where it would fire. So what I found was that when I'm in a tension situation, I don't do that very well. I'm not very consistent with that. So I went back to a whole different method that I used originally for a long time with a hinge and a long time with a thumb button and even back to when I was using my index finger release. All of them are the same. For me, it just mentally that's what works best for me. And basically what it is is, you know, a controlled curl of that middle finger. Now if you have a three finger release, I kind of do the same thing. I still control and move that middle finger in, but what I'll do is I'll start to use that uh, ring finger as well. So like with this one, kind of hang my third finger on there if I wanted to, but the same thing. I won't completely wrap these fingers, these outer fingers around the release and make a J hook. I won't completely wrap them that way. I'll leave them a little bit open and a little bit of movement available there so that when I get to full draw and I start to execute my shot, I can start moving my fingers into that J hook type position. And what that's going to do is rotate that release. If it's a thumb button, it's going to rotate this button into my thumb more. It's going to cause it to trip. Obviously, if it's a hinge, it's going to rotate it. That's what you need it for it to fire. I did the same thing with my index finger releases back when I very first started shooting. I'd get on there and it just a very slow, controlled squeeze. Um, that's the same thing I've always done. Uh, it works really good for me, even when I'm in a tension situation, because I'm not relying on anything to be relaxed. All I'm doing is I'm just squeezing that finger and I'm actually adding that tension back in. And for me, that's going to work really well when I have to be in a pressure situation. I'm going to show you a few shots on my bow, close up, that way you can see exactly what's going. Um, I may try to exaggerate the, the movement and the motion at first just so you can kind of see what you're looking for. And then I'll show you a couple where it's just me shooting and then you can look at it and see what you can see from there.
guys. So as you can see, even with me exaggerating the motion in that uh, the two frames, the two clips that you watch, it's really not even a lot of movement that it takes. Um, I don't have my hinge set, you know, like a hair trigger or really fast or anything crazy like that where it's going to go. I don't even have the fast click in it. Same thing with my thumb, uh, thumb button release. I don't have the trigger on it set really light. I actually have it set heavy enough that I can preload a little bit of tension in my thumb onto that button so I can feel it. And that's because I want a little bit of tension there as I start to rotate the thumb button around. I want it to move into that tension that's already in place so that it will trip it. Um, so it's really what I'm doing with that is a very controlled pattern, but I want to go over a couple parts of this where you can be able to use this effectively. One is I don't do this in a start and stop motion. Um, the way I'm going to do this is set up my aim and set up my form to where that I have a good float on target. And then once I start with that rotation in that finger, I'm going to pull a little bit back very slowly and, and, and just very small amount back. And I'm going to rotate that finger and rotate those releases around to where everything just goes really fluidly. I'm not starting and stopping based off of what I'm seeing on my aiming picture. Once I commit to my shot, I'm committed, I'm 100% going. Uh, that's a big thing that I find. If you start to start and stop on it, one, you're going to really elongate your shot window, and we don't want to do that. And then the other part of that is you're going to start trying to control your aim and over aim, and your form and your body is going to break down. So you don't want to do that either. Um, what I will do when I get it full draw is I'll actually start to tense up certain muscles to be able to hold myself steadier. I'll have a little bit of push that I have towards target until my pin starts to settle the most and then I'll hold that amount there and then I'll pull back a little bit throughout my shot and that'll continue to steady what I see on my movement down on my pin. I'm also going to be tensing up the muscles here on my uh, core and on my side and then I'm going to be using, of course, my muscles on my back for my back tension. That's what's going to help me hold steadiest on target and allow me to be able to pull and rotate through with that shot. As you can see, it's not a punch. It's not a, you know, anything crazy like that where my hand is not moving at all after the release fires. I still have follow through because I'm still pulling back in with my preload and my continual pull throughout my shot. So this arm is still going to come back. I'm still going to have a good follow through there. And that's a really big important part of this as well. You don't want to start becoming lazy on the shot and trying to over aim and just focusing on rotating that release around and not doing anything with this release arm. You're going to start to see your pin go down. You may see some dips. You may see some bobbing up and down on target because you're losing that tension on your back. And you want to be able to avoid that and stay away from that. This continual pressure and tension that you build up, that's going to help keep your pin up on target and keep it centered. It's also going to help you steady up and see a better sight pin picture. I appreciate you watching the video today. If you have any questions, post them below or send me an email. Either one, I'd be glad to talk to you on it. And I uh, hope to see you. Hey everybody, Robert with RC Archery. Today I've got a sneak peek into my shot that I'm going to be able to show you on video here. I'm going to go over exactly how I do it, all my shot execution, the way that I'm aiming on target, um, muscles I use, all that stuff. I'm going to give you 100% access and do exactly what I do. Alright guys, so the type of shot that I have is not going to be one that if you're struggling from target panic or if you have a tendency to have target panic that you're going to want to do. Um, it's what I'm going to be using more of as, as a control type shot. Uh, I'm not going to be fully pulling through a shot where all I'm doing is just focusing on, you know, floating on the target. There's a little bit more involved with that that I'm going to use when I actually uh, go to access, you know, how I use my release. So, with that being said, how do I do it, right? Well, I've tried tons of different methods over time. And actually this last year, I've spent a lot of time on really focusing on just different ones, um, different ways to set up the bow, different ways to shoot my shot, um, and really varying off of what I've done in the past. And the reason I wanted to do that is because I want to test everything out and just see pluses and minuses of each technique and really find out what works best for me. Um, what I ended up finding is that I basically went back to something that originally what I did, uh, exactly back to that. It works best for me and I'm going to explain why it works best for me. Because um, really when you look at shooting, there's, there's two different times you're going to be shooting. One is just practicing, you know, at home, at your archery range, wherever it is. And it's low stress, you know, everything is just flowing and everything is going. It's really easy when it's like that to be able to do any kind of shot method that you want. You know, whether that's holding there and relaxing, letting the hand stretch out, um, you know, whether it's relaxing on the index finger, whatever that may be, it's really easy to do that type of shot. 
But when you get into a situation where there's a little bit more tension placed on you, whether it's at a tournament or you know shooting at an animal or a bet between you and a friend, or you're just putting that pressure on yourself because you want to try to get you know a certain score, or just something like that, you'll find that your body tenses up your mind doesn't work as fluidly and it's a little bit harder to do some methods consistently. I have a lot of people say that they hang up a lot and they can't get their hinge to fire because they're used to letting their hand relax and stretch out or they're used to relaxing the index finger. I was kind of the same way. Um, the method that I used a lot for a long time was letting my hand stretch and allowing that motion to rotate my hinge or to rotate the thumb button where it would fire. So what I found was that when I'm in a tension situation, I don't do that very well. I'm not very consistent with that. So I went back to a whole different method that I used originally for a long time with a hinge and a long time with a thumb button, and even back to when I was using my index finger release, all of them were the same. For me, it just mentally that's what works best for me. And basically what it is is you know a controlled curl of that middle finger. 